Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so can you go to the Khan Academy course and I'll show you where I'm at. And I think, let's see, um, what else is what's next? Okay. There, you can you can drive as well. gotten just to the quotient rule. Um, quotient rule. Uh, what else? So next I'm looking at, I was uh, just looking at rational coming over. So rational is basically uh, the same as quotient rule. It's just expressed in, uh, in a, I guess, a rational. Uh, so next I was looking at radical. But before we do that, I think uh, the chain rule, you know, with respect to a different function, so what is the difference between uh, the triangle delta y over delta x and dy dx? And if I have a function uh, uh, function u and v, so often you see d of u with, with respect to v, uh, d of v. Yeah. Uh, so that part, I, I can kind of understand it by looking at the expression, but I, can't, I don't have any intuition for it. So it's like, what is there with respect to something? What does that mean? So there. So our first question is, what's the difference between y by dx yeah. and dot y dot x? Delta y divided by uh, x, right? Yeah. Oh, do you have a uh, latex on there? No. This is just built into Word and OneNote. Oh. Yeah. Um, and the second one was something. Was what? Uh, no idea. Oh, uh, the, with respect to something. So say I have the intermediate function, mm -hmm. and then uh, using the chain rule. I'm deriving uh, first with respect to the inner function, and then I'm deriving the inner function with respect to, uh, to x. So I give something like that. So I got du dx and uh, wait, dy, dy by du times dy d. du, du dx, exactly, yeah. And you're like, what's going on here? So I don't have an intuition for that. What is with respect to something? Okay. Yeah, great. Um, all right, so let's go over this uh -huh. first, and then we'll do that. Yeah. Um, so we've got some. Let's see. We've got some curve like that, uh -huh. and. We could take two points, yeah. and then we would get this would be our delta x, yeah. this would be our delta y. Right? Yeah. Make sense? sense? Now, this here isn't quite the derivative at this point, right? No. We can see it's a bit too big. It's not the derivative at this point. Uh, exactly, it's, yeah. It's too small to be the derivative there. Too small to be the. Yeah. So the derivative at this point would be. The slope, oh, yeah, it's the a slope of that. It's a slightly slope. different curve, yeah. Yeah. So to get the derivative exactly at this point, what we want to do is we want to zoom in. This is like your h going to zero. Yeah. So in the definition, it says uh, dy over dx is the same as delta y over delta x as the limit of h approaches zero. Yeah. OK. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So we want to take points and like really small triangles, yeah. So that exactly. point is still delta x and delta y. It is. Okay. But then 
we want to have that page go through. Yeah, yeah, like you said. Okay. So that's the difference. Um, so basically, dy by dx is delta y by delta x. Yep. That's a limit afterward where they're going to zero. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think for your intuition, it's generally helpful to think in terms of delta y and delta x. Yeah. Just think, okay, if these are small, but we have some delta y over delta x. Yeah. And it's easier to think that way, I think. Okay. Any questions? Mm, I think it, it'll probably come up. Uh, I remember someone else was showing me. Uh, it could also be that the du over or the dy over du, du over dx stuff. And then I started wanting to do it algebraically, canceling out du, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's where I just got confused because because that's one notation. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, I can just play with it like. Um, it's dy over dx, and you start manipulating dx independently of dy, and vice versa. In general, that'll work fine to do that. Yeah. But yeah, technically, it's delta y over delta x, and now a limit. Yeah. And so if you play with it separately, you're kind of separating out that limit. So. Yeah, that's we, the part I don't quite. We do understand. actually, we do actually separate it. Yeah. And do integrals, and that's kind of a different notation. Yeah. Um, and you can you can imagine when we do integrals, we can imagine that dy is just some really small, but not quite zero length in terms okay. of y. So, um, so yeah, the answer is technically you can't separate them, but but you can, <laughs> you can even think about it that way generally and get away with it. And I think it helps provide intuition. Okay. To do that. So then, so that's a graph. Um, at that point, it's dy over dx. I think that's a good transition into this point of what would dy du and du dx look like graphically, or does it, or is that even a valid question? Uh, we could try and draw a couple of graphs to represent that. Okay. I'm trying to think of a good example. Yeah, we could. Or where. We actually do that. Um, why don't we go over where we use this first? Okay. I'll make up a problem. Um, do you know how to do the derivative of e to the x? No, it's just e to the x. Okay, great. Do you know how to do the derivative e to the 2x? Uh, e to the 2x is uh, 2 e, of e to the x. 2 e to the 2x. Yeah. Oh, wait, 2 e to the 2x? Yeah. OK. Um, so we've got e to the, let's just make sure. So if y equals e to the 2x, yeah. can you figure out y prime? You can okay. write it down. Because uh, y prime, it's, uh, Let's see, I'm done with the E. I'm guessing the 2x. Wasn't that the same as uh, 2? Um, you drop the 2 down and then you take the. Okay, the let's, let's read all this. Um, I didn't want to make this part hard. <laughs> I, was just okay. checking, I was just checking that yeah. you knew it. So I don't remember e to the x, that's e all. That's, that's e to the x. Yeah. Um, y is equal to x cubed. Mm -hmm. So that three drops down to the to the square three x squared. Great. Yeah. Okay. Get this out of the way. Okay. Um. So now if we have y equals. Uh, I guess e to the x minus three. Uh -huh. Power of four. Uh huh. Let's take the derivative of that. You know how to do that? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Um. So that one. So we do. We take the derivative of, of the outer function. Mm -hmm. Um. So y prime is four e to the x minus three three times the derivative of the inner function, which mm -hmm. becomes uh, 
So e x and minus three uh, is zero. So times e x. So that's it. Does that make sense to you? Um, yes and no. I I remember the formula as the way how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I understand it outside of the formula. So you know the formula, but you don't understand like why that formula. So y prime, we can think uh -huh. of that the change in y yeah. over the change in x yeah. as we make those go to zero. Yeah. OK. Um, <clears throat> so one way to look at that is here. Uh -huh. This is the change in y divided by the change in e to the x minus 3. Yeah, so that part confuses me. It's it's like uh, I have a gap of just looking at that and not quite sure what's going on. Um, so ultimately, let's maybe put some numbers in. Um, So this here is the change in y uh -huh. divided by the change in x. It is, that's what's actually equal to 3x squared, right? No. Um, so when we change x here by a little bit, uh, the change in y will be equal to 3x squared times the change in x, approximately. OK. Yeah, makes sense? Yeah. Let's see. This is just the slope, right? Take the slope, slope times times that. Uh, okay, yeah. Do the rise. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So then here we know that the change in y mm -hmm. is approximately just the change in the middle. It'll be we know just like here it would be four times um, e to the x minus 3 cubed times the change of this thing here. Yep. Does that seem intuitive? Uh, let's see. Change in y is... Okay, so that part is, I understand. So that's the same as delta x, really, if that's yeah. a different, different letter or something. Yeah. So the change... So that's just, this part is the slope, this part here. Um, so that's the derivative. We could say, you can think of this as this is u to the fourth. Yeah. Where u equals e to the x yeah. minus 3. I should zoom out. Um, yeah. So that's the derivative of u to the fourth would be 4 u cubed, right? Uh huh. Okay, so this is our 4u cubed yep. times the change in u should give yep. us the change in y. Yeah? Yep. Cool. And then we can go, okay, so the change in this, uh -huh. well, that should just be the derivative of this, which is the slope, right? So it's e to the x times the change in x. e to the x times the change in x. Uh, I can I can see the same pattern over here, and then when you expand uh, this part, it's also the same pattern. Mm -hmm. But once it's uh, once I don't see this as a as u anymore, once I see this as a separate um, function, and then I'm just, I, I don't quite under it doesn't quite connect anymore. This part is so that's mm -hmm. a slope. This part is a slope. Slope times uh, the change in x. Mm -hmm. So graphically, uh, let's say. So let's say x squared. So graphically, the change in y. Let's see. Three x squared. Uh, so if this is uh, the 3x squared, so that's already the slope of this function, then the changing y. 
Are we, this is the changing y. Are we talking about the changing y in here, or the changing y in here? Let's so say uh, this is because so, this is already delta y. Where well, the so y this prime. is the y-axis. That's the yeah. x-axis. So this equation represents that. Okay. Um, so yeah. So here we're talking about, you know, imagine two points are like pretty close together. Yeah. Now yeah, we're talking about a change in y. Yeah. And a change in x. Oh, right. Okay. So that's the slope. That's this part here. The slope there. Yeah. yeah. Then exactly. So the the changing y is the slope times changing x. Yeah. Okay. And then if we look at over here, then if I don't see that as e, e to the x minus three, then it's the same as this part over here. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, x. really, this is, you know, x just represents a number, right? Mm -hmm. And y represents another number, and they're related by this equation. Mm -hmm. So if we want to know how much this number changes when they're related by that equation, mm -hmm. it's whatever, you know, whatever that number x was squared times 3 mm -hmm. times the change in the x squared, right? Mm -hmm. Make sense? That part makes sense, yeah. So ultimately, I mean, this just represents a number, right? That's true. So the change in this number, y, should be 4 times that uh -huh. cubed, yeah. whatever that number is, cubed, yeah. times the change in that number. Yeah. OK, and then, so then we, we find um, uh, the delta, the change in that number. Yeah. Um, OK, so okay. that is to say uh, we're finding the, the slope of the change for this number. Yeah. Okay. So here, for this part, we did the slope with respect to this whole thing as, uh -huh. our, as our other number. Yeah. And here we're doing the, the slope of that number with respect to x. Yeah. Okay. So the, um, when the function, let's, so we have uh, this function is u, in which case if we're trying to take. Um, we need more space. Maybe we can just move it down. Oh, no, we're good. So if we're, we're taking the derivative of y. Make some more space here. Um, can There's you no infinite scroll. Oh, let's, let's go to just select mode. It's right clicking. Technical difficulties. That's interesting. I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so that's y, and we're taking uh, the derivative of y, and I think the intermediate step was, uh, and that's the linear function. That's u. So we're doing dy over dx is this uh, with respect to x is the same as dy over du. Du times du over dx. Um, if we were to look, at, if we were looking at this algebraically, I want to cancel out the two du's, mm -hmm. and then I get dy over dx. Yep. Um, is that valid? Um, so technically, there's limits in here. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's a good way to understand it. If you think of all of these become very, very small delta y over delta u, and very uh -huh. small delta u over delta x. Uh huh. Yeah. It would be totally valid in that case. Um, so, yeah. so how does the limit affect um, the technicality? You just, you just have to be careful. Yeah. Um, I don't think we should dive into that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I don't know. I could probably figure some stuff out. If not, we could look at the books and whatnot. I don't, th I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, because my current goal is just to pass the exam first. And then uh, if I find a useful, I can continue studying. Yeah. But I need to pass the exam to apply for university. Right. So right now I'm just aiming for coverage. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's good to understand what's going on, which yeah. it seems like you understood this, right? Yeah. Um, and you could understand this, like, okay, we know when we change x that changes u, mm -hmm. we know when we change u that changes y. Exactly. So let's just imagine, say this slope was three, 
Mm -hmm. So whenever we change x by 1, this one u, changes, u by changes by 3. Yeah. Whenever we change u, let's say this is 4, uh -huh. which means whenever we change u by 1, uh -huh. y changes by 4. Uh -huh. Okay. So then if we change x by 1, how much does y change? Well, that would be 3 times 4. Yeah. So we just multiply those two. And that would be how multiply. quickly. Multiply. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Okay, that's a that's good intuition. Uh huh. Okay, that part makes sense. Uh, then let's see. Let's take a look at this guy here. Uh, there's one question. Uh, I wonder if it's the textbook they were just. Uh, abbreviating how they're writing things, but one of the questions confused me quite a bit. Uh, it's one of the early questions. 30, 31, I believe. Oh yeah, these two questions are pretty interesting. Okay. 30 and 31? Yeah. So I was looking at, I was just doing all the odd number questions, and then uh, I couldn't quite understand this one, so I thought I would do a question before, yeah. and then I also couldn't quite understand this one. So when they say u, is u a variable or is u a function? What does that matter? I would think of it as a variable. But is this a one here? That's a one. Do you want it over dx? Equals one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I thinking you no. that's one number is some function of x. I'm thinking. Uh -huh. Um, so d1 by dx equals d1 by du times du by dx, right? Okay. Now, what is d1 going to be? d1 is always zero. Yeah, because it doesn't change. Yeah. <laughs> that better be zero. So, as we change u, well, we can't change you because uh, so but here uh -huh. if we changed you then they wouldn't be equal anymore right yeah. okay so one can't change change therefore you can't change yeah um, and since you use one so there might be some derivative here, yeah. but we're just not allowed to make u change. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just it's messed up. <laughs> One is not a variable. Exactly. Yeah. So how can you derivatives change? are like yeah. But how does this change with respect to that? So if one, are we looking at one as a, a function that that always gives you one? Doesn't matter the input. So in that case, one is one is a number. Yeah. It's not a variable. Let's just short yeah. that. Thanks. <laughs> forgetting your name right now. Billion. Got Billion. It. Yeah. Billion. Yeah. So u is a variable. It's not a function. But then is because a variable can also hold a function. It can be equal to a function. It can be equal to a function of a value. Uh, be equal to a function, uh, um, saying you can contain the output of function, or you can yeah. be equal to the output of the function. Yeah, generally. So then u is a constant in this case. Um, yeah, so u, yeah, it's just equal to a single value here. Okay. Yeah. So I would say this is 
These are not defined. Because uh, this chapter earlier, they were looking at the, the square law. Was it uh, uh, u to the um, u squared is, uh, was it 2u times du over dx? OK, cool. Yeah. That sounds. But d1 does exist, doesn't it? Because d1 is always 0. Yeah, it's it's like when we talk about slopes, yeah. we're thinking of how does one variable change with another variable. Yeah. And one isn't a variable. But uh, y equals to 1, then it's always, the slope is flat. So it re regardless uh, of x, it's always, it, it, isn't it still valid? It's just always 0. So if we have y equals 1, yeah. then we can say y prime is equal to 0. And yeah. the y prime is d what by d what? It's uh, dy over dx. Yeah. Usually, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here we think of the 1 as being a function of x. Yeah. Except it's a constant function. No yeah. actual axis in it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not, we don't have a d1 on the top, most importantly. And we still have some other variable x on the bottom. Uh-huh. But d, uh, if dy gives us 0, so then it doesn't matter what dx is. Well, it doesn't matter what axis, it's always going to be 0 divided by something, so it's always 0. Or is yeah. it? Yeah, I guess I guess. OK. y never changes, so it doesn't yeah. matter what other variable. We put. Yeah. As we change that other variable, y won't change. Yeah, yeah exactly. OK. OK. And then. Okay, so let's see, so u in that case is just a variable, it's not, because sometimes I see the notation of people using um, uh, a single letter to denote a function. Well, I guess we just did that, because each of the x minus 3, we used uh, the letter u to, den to denote that. E to the x minus 3, yeah. Um, so we're moving on to this one, right? Yeah, let's see what Yeah, so u is a function. Um, I think the notation of u confuses me. Okay, so we've got u squared equals mm -hmm. x. Mm -hmm. um, and so now they're taking the derivative of this with mm -hmm. respect to x. So u squared is x, yeah. Okay, I'm going to use this operator here. Have you seen this before? Uh, I have seen it. So it's just like an instruction. Take the derivative of whatever we have yeah. to the right. Okay. And we're taking the derivative of respect to x. Yeah. Okay, so can you do that? So that one is just uh, 2u and then 1. 2u equals 1. No. So this will be 2 times u, but we want to know how this changes with respect to x, right? Okay. Yeah. So we need to multiply by the derivative of how u changes with respect to x. How u changes with respect to x, so that's what d over dx? Yeah. Uh, okay, I think there's a bit of a jump from here to here. Okay. So this side, we're taking the uh, the derivative of u to the uh, of u squared. Yeah. Uh, with respect to x. Mm -hmm. Oh right, because it's with respect to x, which mm -hmm. which is x is the the, the delta x. Okay. Uh, well. So if you go through that thing again, like this is the slope of the u squared with respect to u. Yeah. Right. So maybe this is four, for mm -hmm. example. If u is two, this number would mm -hmm. be four. So 
whenever you change u by 1, u squared changes by 4 times as much. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what this slope says. Um, but then the u is changing because of x is changing. Mm -hmm. And so maybe this is 3. So whenever we change x by 1, u changes by 3 times that. Mm -hmm. And then the change in u get amplified 4 times more because of this. So overall, you get, right, you multiply and you get 12. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Yep. Makes intuitive sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Most people don't get that. So it's great. I, I kind of get it, but I don't think I fully get it yet. That's, that's a These things generally yeah. go over them a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that's the left side. On the right side, we're taking the derivative of x with respect to x. Uh, let me think about that for a second. We're taking, so we're taking the derivative of x. In other words, we are finding the slope of x with respect to x. Yep. So it's, that's always, because x is always, this is the same x, isn't it? So we're always doing dx over dx. Or how, yeah. So, so x is, uh, so that becomes 1, 1 times d over d, 1 times dx over dx, which is 1. Or can dx over dx be simplified as 1? It can be, dx over dx is 1, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you can just think, so the thing on the bottom, if I increase that by 1, mm -hmm. how much does this change by? It changes by one, because yeah. it's the same variable. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, the slope is 1. Okay. It's kind of... If we have x here and x here, well then oh, our, our see, points are I like see. that, right? Yeah. Because it's the same value here and here. So. Yeah, this graph helps, because I was just thinking... Because mm -hmm. I'm always thinking this is y, this is x. Mm -hmm. Our y is also x here. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So it's exactly the same value. Okay. <clears throat> or you could think of the, this, this is the graph of y equals x. Yeah. We're taking the derivative of that function. Cool. So this is one. Uh, let's see. Can we take the derivative of this equation with respect to u? Could, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's try that. Okay. Why don't we finish this? Okay. And then we can do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> cool. Now, we know what u is in terms of x, right? Yep. So we could just plug that in, and then we could solve for what du by dx is. So how would we do that? Okay. Uh, so 2u. Two 2u two is uh, 2 to the square root of x times du over dx. Uh, what is du over dx here? So are we talking? Uh, so this du over dx is the u, this the same u here. So the derivative of uh, u with respect to x, so that's, uh, what was it, uh, x to the half, so that's times half x to the negative half, to the power of negative half equals to 1. Um, okay. Where is this coming from? Because du, um, you du just, is, you uh, just, you you just the took half. the derivative of that. Yeah. All right, cool. And if you multiply that out, what do you get? So that one, that one cancels, that one cancels, so you got x is equal to 1. No, there's no x left. Mm -hmm. x to the minus a half times x to the 1 half, right, would just be equal to 1. Let's go back. Because uh, the half yeah. and, the, and the 2 cancel. Yeah. So that's 1. And then square root of x times square root of x. No, that's x to the minus half. Oh, minus that's half. One that's 1 over squared. x squared. One over that's squared. Uh, that. Nope. So x to the minus 3 is equal to what? Is uh, 1 over x squared. Good. So x to the minus half would be 1 over x oh. to the half, which is that. Yeah, cool. Okay, yeah, so then 1 equals 1. One of them. Yeah. Um, cool. So what they wanted you to do was mm -hmm. they didn't want you to calculate this separately. Mm -hmm. um, so we could think of what you did there as that's like a check. Okay.
um, what they want you to do is just put 2 square root of x, yeah. leave this as du by dx, because we're trying to figure this out mm -hmm. in this different way. Okay. And so then you can just solve for that. Oh, just solve for d over dx. Yeah. So then it becomes 1 uh, divided by the, the 2 square root of x. Yeah. So. Cool. Which is exactly the same as what you got in the formula, right? Let's see, 1 over which part? Um, so you figured out this. Yeah. From you just took the derivative of that, right? Yeah. And so that is the same as this. Uh, let's see, half x. So that's one over. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. So what we did here is we basically refigured out this formula. That result. Oh, I see. Because. Um, I kind of cheated here because I know how to take the derivative of that, which this is actually finding the, the derivative. Yeah, without using the formula. Yeah. I see. Okay, that makes sense. That actually makes quite a bit more sense. Cool. Okay, yeah, that's just so much easier to look at now. Okay, so I just want to comment this. So, uh -huh. so these are equal, right? Yeah. That's how we're defining the variables, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, as we change x, both as we change x, both this and this have to change at the mm -hmm. same rate, right? Because mm -hmm. they're equal to each other. Mm -hmm. Therefore, both sides change at the same rate. Same as saying have the same derivative. Mm -hmm. Must have the same derivatives with respect to x. x. Okay, so if x changes, both sides have to change. Yeah. And so this would be true in general, right? If d by dx of this equals d by dx of this, well, to x, yeah. we could also d by du of this has to be exactly. equal to d by du of this. Yeah. Also, d by dy of this has to equal to d by dy of this. Okay. I don't know if these depend at all on y, right? Yeah. On y. We have, we'd have to be given some other equation which tells mm -hmm. us how they relate. Okay. Um, but however y changes or whatnot. Yeah. It would be true that d by dy of this should equal d by dy of this, right? Because they're equal, so they have to change, right, at uh, the same rate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. And then we just did the math. So you wanted to do d by du, right? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see what it looks like. Right. I think practicing the, uh, the res with respect to something, at least uh, something not, that I haven't done before, could be useful. Yep. Cool. So we're going to change those x's into u's. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. <coughs> With respect to u, so how does u squared change with respect to u? Um, so it's this side, then just d. Can I say those two cancel out? And then I just get the u on this side? Nope. Um, so if something equals x squared, uh -huh. dy by dx, okay. which is like yeah. the derivative of that, no. respect to x is equal to what? It's 2x. 2x, yeah. So this is exactly the same. Yeah. So dy by dx is the same as saying, yeah. here, so with respect to u, so dy by dx is the same as saying d by dx of x squared, right? dy dx is uh huh. So if we're looking at just this part here, we don't see a y. Mm -hmm. So uh, so just looking at this, I wouldn't know how to approach it. I wouldn't know how to translate this one into dy over dx. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> so we're trying to take the so we're taking the derivative of a function and that function happens to be x squared. Mm -hmm. um, it's like x squared changes with respect to x. Are we looking at x squared as uh, as y? You can call it y. I mean, here, y is equal to x squared, right? Yeah. They're the same thing. Yeah. Um, so d by dx of this is like, OK, we want the change in x squared mm -hmm. divided by the change in x, right? Uh, well. And we, what is we the... can give x squared. Basically, we're giving x squared the name y here. Yeah. So, but this is totally equivalent to that. Are these two notations different? Um, d, d over dx y and dy over dx. Um, so these um, these ultimately mean the same. Mm -hmm. The way I would look at it is this is a, an instruction, an operator, yep. to take the derivative of that. Okay. And now after you've taken the derivative of that. Then it's you just get that. Well, dy, but yes. Okay. So, so they're equivalent, but I would look at this as an instruction. <clears throat> okay. So, after you take so the instruction, take the derivative of that. That should give us d of x squared mm -hmm. by dx. Mm -hmm. We don't usually write that. We don't usually put an x squared in there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So let's see. Going back to this guy here. So we have let's see, du over du. So that's the instruction of taking the derivative of that, yep. which then gives me the 2u. Yep. And equals to take the derivative of x with instruction with respect to u. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure how to proceed from here. So there are different variables. Mm -hmm. So you just write that. Well, that's the, so the rate of change of x to u. So it's dx by du. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Is that it? And uh, yeah, so dx by du is 2u. So which I think it makes sense from here. If we called that y and we uh -huh. called u x, it uh -huh. would be y equals x squared. Yeah. And the derivative would be 2x, right? Yeah. And here we got the derivative to you. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So this is um, for every change in u, how fast does x change? Mm -hmm. And that's to you. So if u changes by 1, x changes by 2. x changes by 2 times the value of u. 2 times the value of u, yeah. So if u is 10. Yeah. So then it changes by 20? Yeah, approximately. Okay. And really, we should be doing if u changes by 0 0.0001, yeah. Yeah. then x changes by 0 0.0001 times 20. Right? But what I'm saying mm. is we should have really small. Oh, right, because, because, yeah, because the, the slope can be different. The slope keeps changing. But yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. OK. That makes a lot more sense. OK. I think that's the questions I have uh, about dx, du, and uh, this bit. I mm -hmm. uh, think aside from this, um, how would you recommend um, finding, or I guess I need to memorize trig identities. Um, Can you do that? This is just related to what we were doing here. Okay. So how fast is, does uh, 3x change uh, with, with respect to x? So then for every x, it changes by 3. So this will appear as 3. Yeah. yeah. It's 3. Um, so y is equal to 2x cubed, uh -huh. dy by dx, equal to well, this part, I just uh, already know the power rule from here. So, so it's kind of 6x squared. And if I go d by dx, 2x cubed. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So 2x cubed is a function we're, we're deriving, yeah. um, which means, well, these are the same thing. Then. It's yeah. uh, it's also 6x squared. Yeah. 
Does that make intuitive sense? No, it does. If I look at this guy as the as the instruction to instruction to derive this guy, uh, whereas this is the result of applying this instruction. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, I got the sense that it was uh, still a bit fuzzy. So. And how how about uh, y prime? So that's the same as uh, this guy here. So y prime. Y prime is like what that means is dy by d something or other. Where mm -hmm. what so this if, is um, it's not given yeah. explicitly. So if y if previously y is defined as a function uh, then that's uh, based on x. Yeah. And, and then in this case would be dy over dx. Yeah. Okay. So this notation is nice when it's really clear. Yeah. But when you've got multiple variables floating yeah. around, I would use I would use this kind of notation. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. It explains things more clearly. It helps you notice when you need to do a chain rule. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. This is Isaac Newton Newton notation. This is Leibniz notation. Yeah. They both invented calculus. Cool. Sorry. So you wanted to um, a see. question about something else? Uh, it wasn't a specific question. Um, more that I, I guess remembering the trick identities because they come up quite a bit, at least in pre-calculus, were everywhere. Um, and in calculus, one of the the test questions I did right away was recognizing that it was a trick identity. And then you could simplify and solve the equation. Yeah. So how would you go about, I guess, either getting better at trigonometry or memorizing the, the formula? Um, so I would make sure that you understand the most kind of basic. Mm -hmm. So not getting into double angle identities. Are you using those much? Uh, it was covered in the pre-calc course. Those do appear, especially in integral calculus. You yeah. use, the, use that for some tricks. Mm -hmm. um, but so you should know the unit circle. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. okay. Circle. Yeah. So if I had a formula sheet beside me while I'm, while I'm doing uh, pre-calc and calc questions, like then it becomes quite apparent. Okay. Cool. So. Mm -hmm. This has length of one, right? Yeah. And then we've got some theta there. Yeah. Um, can you put cosine and sine? Yeah. So this is uh, sine of theta. This is the cos of theta. Yeah. So how using Pythagoras? What's the relationship between sine, cos, and cosine? That's the uh, 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 what's it called? Sine squared plus cosine squared yeah. equals to one squared, which is one. Great. So this is kind of like the most important one. Yeah. Um, so then there's some definitions that you need to know. Right. Yeah. So what is tangent theta? Uh, that's sine theta over cosine theta. Great. So these are just things that you need to know. Yeah. Um, and so, oh I, right, I, I watched a YouTube video where the guy just started driving the different formulas based off of these two, and uh, I think a few other basic ones. Yeah, using this, yeah. and then using the definitions, yeah. you can come up with a whole bunch of other ones. Like, mm -hmm. divide this equation by cosine squared, mm -hmm. then you get sine squared over cosine squared, which will be a tangent squared, plus that'll be uh, one now, and yeah. then this will be one over cosine squared, which yeah. is what? Uh, that's uh, cosecant. Yeah. No secant. Wait, no secant, yeah. So it'll be one over one over it'll be secant squared on that side. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, we've got a bunch of bunch of definitions. Mm -hmm. And then you can derive the others. Yeah. Uh, and you should memorize. 
Yeah, so, I find it's the same with uh, calculus. It's like looking at the formula for uh, chain rule and product rule, yeah. like, it's pretty apparent. And then I look at the, the proof for them. Like, so it's better understanding at least. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good to be able to drive stuff. No, I also need to have stuff kind of handy. Exactly, um, yeah. So for, do you have a good system for memorizing this kind of stuff? Yeah, it's just flashcards. Very cool. Yeah, I use digital flashcards. Yeah. And key. Uh, I use Anki as well. Okay. Uh, I haven't used it for math yet. Okay. Um, so, does Anki do, do LaTeX? Um, or how do you use yeah, Anki you for can, math? You can install it, but yeah. I just do things digitally, right? So. Oh, just <laughs> screenshots. <laughs> that works. Work. Yeah. Um, you've got a Wacom tablet, right? So you I could do stuff digitally, it, yeah. and you can just do Alt equals, and you can start typing equations. The other way. Oh, in Anki. Oh, in no, in OneNote. Oh, in OneNote. Okay. And then you can just screenshot. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I just find I use the keyboard for everything. <laughs> yeah. And then I just picked up Atax. So, yeah, this is much easier oh. than writing yeah. stuff up. You can do. You can do things. Yeah. Like that. Um, I have made shortcuts, so. No, oh, I also have the Greek keyboard layout. I just switch to that. Oh, just really? have a few things switch it back. It's pretty wow. easy. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cool. Just memorizing the, the things for those takes forever. Yeah, I know. That's cool. Okay, uh, I think that's pretty good for today. And then I'll cool. go back, do some more homework, and then uh, come back tomorrow. Cool. Um, so, uh, can we so there's, actually. There's also do double angle identities. Right? I don't know if you... Yeah. And then there's the derivatives. Yeah. So the derivatives for those trig identities. Like um, the basic one is uh, uh, sine becomes cosine, and cosine is uh, negative sine. Uh, I just remember those. Yeah, cool. And so from that, you can figure out tangent. Yeah. So it's I mean it's good to figure it out. Yeah, this is you do quotient rule on that, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And then I would also memorize. Yeah. You don't want to, whenever you take the derivative of a tangent, you don't <laughs> want to have to do a quotient rule on this. And particularly when you're doing integral calculus, yeah. so you need to go backwards, you want to recognize that, okay, 1 over co squared, oh, which is secant squared, okay, that's yeah. the derivative of a tangent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you imagine doing this on an exam, that would be pretty time consuming. Yeah. Uh, for tomorrow, I didn't think of. Uh, because we booked four in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think of uh, leaving time for doing homework. Can we push it to later in the day? What's your availability? All right. Let's. Uh...